You can also do a slow-mo. Yeah. Hi bakers, Rise Little Baker here in my very first video. I'm so excited to be here with you in my home kitchen. And a few weeks ago, I asked everyone, if I made a video, first, would you watch it? And second, what would you like to see? And a lot of you said that you were a little intimidated to start making cakes from scratch and you just always use box cakes. And is it truly easier to make a cake from scratch? And does it come out tasting better? I'm gonna tell you, yes and yes and i'm going to show you all of the basics today to make a vanilla cake with a vanilla buttercream from scratch so i have out everything that we're going to need and i can just start by going through the cake pans so the recipe that i'm using makes two eight inch cake pans these are so inexpensive and you have them for life so i would just invest in some cake pans versus like aluminum foil pans i have parchment rounds, which I'll show you what to do with these later. I have butter, eggs, baking soda, baking powder, salt, sugar flour. One bowl to do the mixing, one bowl to do the sifting, and a hay mixer. So we can get started by preparing the pans. So if you've read a recipe and it says in your prepared pan and you're like, here's my pan, it's prepared. No, it's not. So what you wanna do is line it with butter and parchment paper to make sure that the cake can come out of the pan. You can do this with nonstick spray, but I just find that this is an, a double layer of insurance to make sure that the cake comes out of the pan every time. So I'm gonna show you what it means to prepare your pan. So first you need to take a little bit of butter <laughs> and you're just gonna butter the pan the bottom and the sides. Just make sure that you're getting a nice even layer. So I'm just using my hands, making sure that there's a nice... <laughs> Did you hear my voice scratch? No, I didn't. So I'm just using my <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> Like, it's alright to laugh at yourself. So what are you doing? So I'm just using my hands, make sure that I get a nice even layer on the bottom and the sides of the pan. And then I take these parchment rounds. So this is just parchment paper that I've cut using the bottom of the cake pan as a guide. So you're just going to put it right in the bottom and then even it out to make sure there aren't any air bubbles. So you need to get your butter again and do another thin layer on the parchment paper. Even that out. And then we need to take some flour and we're just gonna pour a little bit in the pan. And then I'm gonna put the other pan here to catch the extra flour. Rotate the pan around to ensure that the flour sticks to the bottom and all sides, dumping into the other cake pan. This is a prepared pan. So we're gonna do that again. And I like to have a, a little garbage bowl right next to me so that as I have this excess flour, I wouldn't really cook with this now because there may be some butter particles left on it. So just thank you for coming and toss it. Okay, two prepared pans. So we're gonna put these aside until we're ready to use them. You're also gonna make sure that your oven is preheated to the temperature in the recipe. Our recipe is using an oven that's at 350 degrees. Okay, so the next step is to go ahead and get our dry ingredients combined, and then we will start working on the cake batter. The dry ingredients that this cake uses, I need to get the salt. Okay. So the dry ingredients that this cake uses, two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, and you want to lighten your flour a little bit with your measuring cup. And the reason is because flour can get really compacted and really dense, and you don't want it to be compact in the cup because that could, that's 
a lot more volume of flour than like an aerated cup like this is. There's one cup, so you just you know, level it out, lighten it up, scoop, and then just use your finger and level it. There's two. And here is a half. So you wanna sift this into a bowl because the dry ingredients can get pretty lumpy if there's some moisture in the air. Lumpy dry ingredients will just make a lumpy cake batter and you want something that's really smooth and homogeneous. So then we need a half teaspoon of baking powder. Did you see that? So baking powder is a leavening ingredient which means it helps the cake rise. Most baking powder is double acting which means it works twice. Once whenever you introduce it to liquid, which is when you add in the wet ingredients of your cake, and the other whenever you add it to heat, so whenever you put it in the oven. So that's gonna help the cake rise evenly. And then we also need a half teaspoon of baking soda. You'll notice that you add baking soda to cakes that have like lemon juice or sour cream or in our cakes, it, um, it sends buttermilk. So those are the acidic components and the baking soda is gonna help aid in the rising of the cake. The rising. The rising. And then we need one teaspoon of salt. You may wonder, why are you putting salt in something that's sweet? But the salt helps to counterbalance all the sweetness and actually brings out the natural flavors of the ingredients. So you, you'll often see salt in sweet recipes. So now you have the dry ingredients mixed together, so we're gonna put that aside and we're gonna add it later. So let's get our big bowl. And the first step of most cake ingredients, cream the butter and sugar together. So I'm gonna show you what that means. So our recipe uses two sticks of unsalted butter at room temperature. I literally took this out of the fridge last night. It's very soft, but it's not melted. So this means that it will form very easily when you mix it with the sugar. We use unsalted butter typically in baking because different brands of butter have different salt contents. And so if you were to use one brand of salted butter that had a lot more salt than another brand, it may offset the taste of the recipe because we already added our salt. So using unsalted butter guarantees that your cake comes out the same every time. So with this butter, we need one and a half cups of sugar. So we're just gonna pour that right in. And with your hand mixer, stand mixer, whatever you have, start out on a low speed and then gradually increase to medium high. And you're just gonna keep mixing until the butter is fully incorporated with the sugar, which I'll show you what it should look like. You can see that it's a very thick, pale yellow color, texture, consistency. It stays on the spoon whenever you hold it up. And otherwise, this is one thing versus butter and sugar. So when a recipe says to cream the butter and sugar, this is what you should look for. So the next step in a recipe is usually to add the eggs. And our recipe uses two eggs and three egg yolks. So I normally like to crack the eggs into a separate bowl just in case I get some shell or the egg is somehow not up to standard to eat. And if you added it to the butter and sugar, you would have essentially ruined your batter so far and you'd have to start over. I like to crack the egg on the surface of the table you're working on, not on the side of the bowl. Because sometimes the dirtiest part of an egg is the shell. Because let's think about it, where did this egg come from? So just crack it on the side of the table, open it at the crack, right into the bowl. Garbage bowl, and then three egg yolks. There are a couple of ways to get, to separate the egg from the egg white. So, <laughs> there are a couple of ways to separate the egg yolk from the egg white. Most of the time, I'll just crack it on the table 
and then open it over a bowl. Well, this is why I don't do this because oftentimes I'll crack the, the shell and that could actually crack the yolk. So I actually just use my hand. Clean hands, I've cracked the yolk. Now what? <laughs> you know, all of the whites seem to have fallen. Yeah. I'm just gonna use it. That's why I don't do it that way. Literally, I just crack it, put it right in another bowl. And then with my clean hands, just grab the yolk and let the whites fall through your fingers. Maybe rock it back and forth. And there's our yolk. Now I gotta wash. You wanna add the eggs one at a time to the sugar and butter mixture because you're trying to slowly incorporate all of the ingredients. And if you were to add all of this at once, it would kind of overwhelm the sugar and butter and it may not actually become the emulsion that you're looking for, or it may take a lot longer. So we're just gonna start the mixer on low and we're gonna put these eggs in one at a time until I have like a thick, creamy mixture. And if you notice that some of the egg mixture is coming up the size of the bowl, just stop your mixer and scrape it down. So let's crank this up. So the next ingredient is two teaspoons of vanilla extract. So I actually make my own good vanilla. And all I did was back in March when quarantine started and I thought, I need something to do. I put some bourbon in this jar with four vanilla beans and just let it set. And by November, it was ready. And so now I have vanilla extract and I can just continue to replenish with extra bourbon, extra vanilla beans as I have some left over. And essentially I have good vanilla for life. So if it's something you're interested in, I would highly recommend it. So we need two teaspoons. So let's blend that in. So we have the flour, baking soda, baking powder, and salt that we sifted before. And we have one cup of buttermilk. It's acidic, it's kind of tangy. It'll add like a nice depth of flavor. So we add it alternately because like I said before with the eggs, if I added all of the dry ingredients, the cake would be way too dry and then it may not actually absorb all of the liquid and vice versa. So we're gonna do this in three parts and you always wanna start and end with your dry ingredients. So I'm gonna add a third of the dry ingredients as I'm mixing. So let's turn this on low you don't want to be wearing it. Mix until the flour is almost combined and then add half of the buttermilk. You don't have to exactly measure half and half, just a rough eye on the screen. Add half of your remaining flour mixture and mix until just combined and then add the rest of your buttermilk. Finish off by adding the rest of the flour and mixing until fully incorporated. Okay, so you can see that the mixture hasn't completely combined yet, but that's okay because what I don't want to happen is for the flour to develop the gluten proteins. If I were to just keep mixing, say I had a stand mixer, I turned it on high and walked away for 10 minutes and came back, there would be way too much gluten in this mixture for a light and airy cake. And what would end up happening is the mixture would bake and I would end up with bread. So if you think about bread is stiff, it's firm, it's, it's thick. Cakes are light, fluffy, airy. The reason that they're light and fluffy is because you don't overmix the flour. So anytime that you're using a hand mixer or a stand mixer, I always just mix until it's almost combined and then finish mixing by hand. And see that took maybe 
20 extra seconds. And it's a good arm workout for the day. So that's it, that's our mixture. So let me clear the decks here. Now we put them in our prepared cake pans. So if you wanna be exact and you have a kitchen scale, you can measure the cake pans with a kitchen scale to make sure you have the same amount of batter in each. I do have a kitchen scale, but I'm gonna show you another way in case you don't. With an ice cream scoop. This is a good way, especially if you're making cupcakes, you can just scoop the batter out with your ice cream scoop and put it in each of the cupcake tins and that ensures that you have the same amount of batter in each cupcake. The same principle works here. You can also eyeball it, it's totally fine. Maybe I should get the scale and see how close they are. Ooh. Oh, now we're getting spicy. <laughs> and then I just take an offset spatula and even out the batter. You want it to be nice and level so that as the cake rises, it rises level. First one is at 7.77. 783. That's wonderful. So these cakes bake at 350 degrees for 32 to 35 minutes. So what we're gonna do, what we're gonna do is put them in the oven at an angle so that they have space in between each of them so that the hot air can flow, so that they bake evenly. And we're gonna set the timer for half of the time that it bakes, and then we're gonna flip them and flip them. Flip them and flip them. So that each of the cakes gets the same amount of heat on all sides evenly. Now I think if we can set that here and just like watch it. Okay, something happened. <laughs> I'm gonna show you. So the first time using this toaster oven shows me that it has a hot spot. And you may think the cake looks burnt, but I'm gonna tell you why this does not matter. This is exactly why you need to set the baking time for half of the suggested recipe. And flip them because if I would have just set this for 35 minutes and came back, this cake would be irreparable. But I'm gonna show you how we're gonna save it. Nobody's perfect. I never claim to be perfect. So I'm gonna test the cakes for doneness. As you can tell, this one's likely done. So just take a toothpick, a wooden skewer, and poke it in the center of the cake and come right back out. There's no liquid on the cake. If anything, there's just dry batter crumbs. That means that it's cooked all the way through. So we're gonna test this one as well. Perfect. So the cakes are done. We're gonna give them 10 minutes cooling on a wire rack in the pan because this residual baking will actually help complete the whole baking process. And then I'm gonna take them out of the pan, let them sit on the cooling rack at room temperature until they cool completely. So it's been about 10 minutes. I can touch the cake in the pans now. So I'm gonna pull them out of the pan and let them sit at room temperature to cool completely. So while we wait for the cakes to cool, now's a good time to go ahead and make the buttercream and then we can always put it in the fridge if the cakes aren't ready for it yet. So this is a traditional American buttercream, which I find to be the easiest to make. It's just cut and dry, very quick and very tasty. So we're gonna start with four cups of confectioner sugar, which is also equivalent to a one pound bag. So if you have a one pound bag, just dump the whole thing in. There are two ways that you can go about this. 
One is to sift it, like we sifted the dry ingredients earlier, but I find that sifting a pound of powdered sugar takes a long time. So what I usually do is put it in a bowl and then just whisk it. What the whisk does is eliminate some of those big clumped up pieces and the mixer will get rid of the rest of it. It's, it's not that serious. So this amount of buttercream calls for two more sticks of unsalted butter, also at room temperature. So this has been out for like a day and a half at this point, which is wonderful because it's gonna mix and incorporate with the sugar very easily. So I'm actually gonna add one stick at a time and I'm gonna mix it on slow. I don't want this to go all over me, but it probably will. Now the butter has pretty much broken up into crumbs. It kind of looks like, like a Parmesan cheese at this point. So what we're gonna do now is add our liquid ingredients. So I'm gonna add two teaspoons of vanilla. I'm just gonna eyeball, but it's two teaspoons is approximately what I'm adding. We're gonna add a pinch of salt. I would say probably a half teaspoon. You need the salt to balance out the sweet. So this is a basic vanilla buttercream. And it's at this point that you can choose to add whatever flavor you want. I would add a little less vanilla and then add in another flavor if you wanted a different kind of buttercream. For instance, I've added rum before. Our rum vanilla buttercream is pretty good. Uh, if you wanted some sort of citrus, that now's the time that you could add a little bit of lemon juice. Uh, if you wanted to add almond extract instead of vanilla to make an almond cake. All of these are really great variations to this basic concept of a buttercream. So now I'm gonna add about one of the two tablespoons of milk while I'm mixing to try and get it to come together. And there you have it. You have your buttercream. I think this is a perfect, nice, spreadable consistency. And as soon as our cake's cool, we're gonna decorate it. We're almost there, we're in the home stretch. So our cakes have cooled completely. I can put my hand on them and I don't feel any warmth. So now what we wanna do is trim off the top dome and the top burnt piece. I told you, it's gonna be okay. So here's our first better looking cake but you can see that the center rose just a little bit more. And so to make a completely level cake, we want to cut off the dome so that we have a nice top. Use a serrated knife and while keeping it level, cut off any uneven parts of the top of the cake. We are gonna cut all this out, both the cake and the footage. Scraps for us. So I told you, it's fine. We're gonna cut this little burnt piece off and no one's ever gonna know. You and me, the only ones that are gonna know. A perfectly cooked cake. So now we have our two cake layers. Let's toss that. Well, save it for later. So now we're ready to decorate. So we have two cakes that have been leveled off and I'm gonna pick the worst one for the bottom and I'll explain why when we get to the top. So this one has some little scraggly bits. That's okay, we're gonna cover it with icing. And before we put it on our cake stand, which we're gonna serve it on, I like to take a little bit of our frosting right in the middle 
and that keeps the cake on the cake stand so that you don't worry about it slipping and sliding whenever it's decorated. So there's nice and secure. And then before I start any sort of buttercream, I like to protect the cake stand from icing and cake crumbs with pieces of parchment paper. So I actually just slide it right in. So now I'm gonna put icing in between the two layers of the cake. Looking at how much icing I have prepared, I would say exactly this much. You want it to be an even layer, but this is also your chance to even out any of the uneven parts of the cake. So there may be some places where there's more frosting than other places, and that's okay. Now's your time to fix any of those non-perfect pieces. And sometimes I just get down level with it and make sure that the icing is perfectly even. So that looks good. Oh. <laughs> so then I take the final cake. And we have this cut side and we have the side formerly known as the bottom. But we're gonna flip it over and the bottom will become the top. And that's because we have the nice edges from the cake pan and that's gonna make a very nice top of the cake. Just get all those scraggly bits off. We're gonna put it right over top. Make sure it's right on top of the other layer. Push down just a little to secure it. You don't wanna squish the icing out. So what I wanna do now is brush off some of those scraggly bits at the, at the ends so that I can get the frosting on without it becoming part of the frosting. So let's brush it off. Make sure you get it all over your floor. <laughs> so the next step is one that often gets missed, but I think it's really important for the final look of the cake, and it's called crumb coating. So what I'm about to do is basically put a thin layer of icing all over the outside of the cake, and then I'm gonna chill it for about 15 minutes. That's gonna solidify that icing, and then I can frost the rest of it over that icing versus over the edge of the cake with these scraggly bits. So that's gonna prevent the outside of the cake from having all of those little, little nooks and crannies on the inside. So you just start with a little frosting on the top. And then I like to work my way toward the edge and then go down with the excess. And you can see the frosting is capturing those little pieces, which is exactly what we want. Continue crumb coating until you have a thin, even layer on all of the exterior of the cake. Oh, I'm hot. Great. So now we just let it chill for 10, 15 minutes long enough to let this icing set, and then we can come back and use the rest of the icing to decorate. The crumb coat has set. We are on to our final step, which is adding the rest of the frosting to the cake and decorating it however you want. So there are a number of ways that we could decorate this. We could do a naked cake, which honestly is one of the easiest ways to decorate, which is just like the thin layer on the outside where the cakes still show through. We could add a full layer of frosting all over the cake. We could use this frosting to pipe flowers, stars, leaves. It's all up to whatever you want. So again, I start at the top and kind of work the frosting down. I realize I've been using the words frosting and icing interchangeably, and now I don't know what I actually call it. Frosting. Then why am I saying icing? I don't know. What is the difference between frosting and icing? According to Martha Stewart, 
Frosting is thick and fluffy and is used to coat the outside of a cake. Icing is thinner and glossier than frosting and can be used as a glaze or for detailed decorating. I think we should do a naked cake to show you how easy it is to make something that's very trendy right now. And it requires less work. I feel like I gave you bad advice. I truly do that. I use longer pieces normally. I broke it up too small for some reason. Use longer strips, they stay. I had a little bit of frosting left over, so I put it in a bag with a star tip. And so you just squeeze with your right palm and guide with your left hand if you're a righty like I am and we can just pipe some stars on top. So yeah, there's a lot you could do with a simple vanilla cake and a vanilla buttercream frosting. I do call it a frosting. Did I say icing? I do call it a frosting. Yeah, so here is your vanilla cake with your vanilla buttercream frosting. So I think we should cut into it and see what it looks like on the inside, yeah? What's not to love? So let's give it a taste. It's fluffy, airy. The buttercream is sweet, but I don't find it to be too sweet. And I think it's the perfect vanilla on vanilla cake. So I hope you enjoyed Rise Little Bakery's first tutorial. Please let me know in the comments what you'd like to see next. I'm happy to challenge myself and you in making whatever you feel would make you a better baker. Bye bakers. See, I don't know why the timer automatically starts. Time. Oh. Because <laughs> you had it set to yeah. start. Oh. No. Oh. Do you want to try to do, first you need a little bit of butter again. Sorry, I interrupted. I'm so sorry. Yes, you're right. So first you just need a little bit of butter. It's much easier to add dry to wet than wet to dry. Is that true? <laughs> dry to wet. You. Have a look. So far, it looks like it's happening in real time. Because it is. <laughs>